for straight spitting. Considering when I upload this, I will be having 80% of my setup cut out. Hey everybody, I know I haven't been around in a while, like two years or something, but uh, life happens, you know, life gets busy, my life is very busy, got a lot going on. But enough of the excuses, your bitch is coming back, don't you worry. <laughs> If you followed me or you've been subscribed to me for a while, not much has changed. <laughs> I'm still the same man, still live in the same area, still have a makeup artist, but I'm also working in child welfare and I get to get a new dog. Well, she's not new. I've had her for like over a year now. This is her. Her name is Kaya. You guys can see her beautiful face. Oh, there she is. That's her. It's Kaya. And Coda's over there. <laughs> but that's not really the point of this video. Just wanted to update y'all really quick on, you know, my life. Not much has changed. The point of this video is that I wanted to tell y'all that I am going to be using this channel to document my vertical sleeve gastrectomy journey. If you don't know what a vertical sleeve gastrectomy is, because it's a long fucking word, some people call it VSG, some people call it gastric sleeve, basically it's a weight loss surgery. And this is something that I've been wanting for probably like four years now <laughs> since I knew that it existed. And when I was trying to do my research and learn more about it, I didn't really find too many videos on it. Or if I did find videos, they were really old and outdated, or the videos were just like really bad quality, or the person posting wasn't consistent. So like they posted like, oh, I got surgery a week ago, gotta post next week for my update, and then they never did. So I am going to document this journey for those of you who are considering getting gastric sleeve, who know somebody getting gastric sleeve, or if you just want to learn more about gastric sleeve. So a little bit of backstory, like I said, I've been wanting this procedure for a very long time. And the first time that I inquired about it with my doctor and my insurance, they said that I wasn't heavy enough. Then about five months ago when I inquired about it, again with my doctor and my insurance, they said that there was an exclusion for morbid obesity, aka now I'm too fat. So fuck the people that need this surgery the most, right? Well, I decided to take matters into my own hands and say, fuck the American healthcare system. And I started looking at surgeons in other countries. For a while, I was in between two different surgery centers in Tijuana, but I eventually decided on Elias Ortiz and Company. This is not an ad, by the way. <laughs> When I first booked my surgery, I booked it with Dr. Ortiz because he can choose between two different surgeons. And the reason that I chose Dr. Elias Ortiz is because his name's on the company. So like he has to be the best of the best, right? But after further research, I learned that their other bariatric surgeon, Dr. Mariano Covarrubias, is the one who actually trained Dr. Ortiz and has a lot more experience. Now I'm not saying that Dr. Ortiz isn't good, but personally, I just preferred going with Dr. Covarrubias. Covarrubias. Dr. Covarrubias is also slightly cheaper and if you book your surgery with him you are guaranteed a private hospital room. Whereas with Dr. Ortiz there is the possibility that you may get a private room but it's not guaranteed and you might end up having to share a room with another patient. For me a private room just sounded like the better option since my mother is coming with me and I do not want to subject anybody else to her quirks, personality. She's already going to be stressing me out, I know that, and I don't want her to stress out somebody else as well. So yes, I'm going to be having bariatric surgery in Tijuana, Mexico with Elias Ortiz and Company performed by Dr. Mariano Covarrubias. Oh, also, if you don't know what gastric sleeve, VSG, all the names for it is, like I said before, it is a weight loss surgery, but what exactly it is, it's different from gastric bypass. They essentially cut out about 70 to 80% of your stomach where the like hunger hormone is. So it restricts how much you're able to eat, hence resulting in weight loss. Now let's get into the reasons why I'm getting this surgery. I have always struggled with my weight and my body image, and I've also pretty much always had a very unhealthy relationship with food. Ever since I can remember, I had people telling me that I was fat and putting me on diets. People telling me that I needed to lose weight. I remember being enrolled in different gym memberships. I was bought Herbalife. <laughs> And at one point, my mom even got me a pair of what were referred to as booty shoes. Not sure if any of you remember those. They're basically these tennis shoes that had like two little like air filled balloons, I guess, on the heel 
and sole, I guess that's what the front part's called, I don't know, and it would work out your legs, or it was supposed to, and I got bullied for it, and I got referred to as bully shoes. Another thing that I was bullied a lot for in high school was my cellulite. At my school, we had uniforms. The pants were really unflattering, so I always stuck with the shorts. However, since I didn't grow up as financially fortunate as most of those around me at a private school, I had to wear the same uniform that I bought at the very beginning of freshman year, all the way through my senior year. And of course, people grow in that time, and I definitely grew. So my clothes didn't exactly fit me right, and my shorts were very tight and rode up on me, and you would see all my cellulite. So the nickname that the boys in my class came up with was MCC, which stood for Shell's Cottage Cheese, referring to, of course, my cellulite. Of course, being bullied in school had a big impact on me and my body image, but also didn't really help that my family was also telling me that I needed to lose weight. And they would always critique the things that I ate, how I ate it. Still to this day, as a 27 year old woman, I have family members that will comment on my pictures or my stories where I post a picture of food and tell me that I shouldn't be eating it. And looking back, I realized that I wasn't fat. I was not fat. Was I a little overweight? Sure. And I was always thicker and curvier than the rest of the girls in my class. So yeah, maybe I was bigger in comparison, you know, to the other girls, but I by no means was fat. And I really wish that I would have realized that then. I look back at pictures from myself back in high school, middle school, even a few years ago when I was lighter than I am now. And I remember thinking that I was fat in like all of them. But I look at them and I'm like, girl, you're not fat. <laughs> You're gorgeous. What the hell? I would kill to look like that now. I actually recently had like a confrontation with my mother over the pictures because, you know, she was one of the people who had a big impact on me and my body image and my unhealthy relationship with food and all of that because she would constantly tell me to lose weight, would critique what I ate, would critique how I ate. She never let me have like the normal kid snacks that kids would have or normal kid cereals that kids would have. She was constantly worried about my weight. And I kind of understand because um, on my father's side, there's a history of like heart problems and obesity and stuff like that. But her concerns came out in the wrong way and were actually very vain. So what happened was I was looking at some old pictures and I found a few in particular where you can tell that like I was not fat at all. I think I was 16 in them, 16 to 17. And you could see my collarbones. I had more defined cheekbones. This is makeup, but you know, I had more defined cheekbones. I wasn't, I just wasn't fat. And I remember vividly my mother, you know, basically telling me that I was fat. So I confronted her, I showed her the pictures and I said, how dare you call this girl fat? What on earth made you call this girl right here fat? Because I don't see it. And what she told me was really fucked up. But she pretty much said, actually verbatim, <laughs> she said, I guess you were a size medium and I just wanted you to be a small. Not gonna lie, that fucked me up a bit. <laughs> like you were really telling a young girl who was a size medium that she was fat and that she needed to lose weight and comparing her to her classmates or other family members who were slimmer. But anyways, moving on. Um, my struggle with body image and food started at a very young age. I eventually developed a, an eating disorder and it is a constant struggle. I have binge eating disorder and not a lot of people talk about binge eating disorder. Most people think of eating disorders as anorexia and bulimia, which make you skinny. And honestly, I didn't even know about binge eating disorder until I heard an ad on the radio about a clinical trial being done for people with binge eating disorder. So once I realized that it was an actual thing and that I wasn't really alone, that was kind of comforting. And I went in to that doctor's office, got diagnosed with it and did the clinical research trial or clinical research study. In case you don't know what binge eating disorder is, let me read for you from the Mayo Clinic how they describe it. Binge eating disorder is a serious eating disorder in which you frequently consume unusually large amounts of food and feel unable to stop eating. Almost everyone overeats on occasion, such as having second or thirds of a holiday meal, but for some people, excessive overeating that feels out of control and becomes a regular occurrence crosses the line into binge eating disorder. When you have binge eating disorder, you may be embarrassed about overeating and vow to stop but you feel such a compulsion that you can't resist the urges and continue binge eating. If you have binge eating disorder, treatment can help. Then they go into the symptoms. They say most people with binge eating disorder are overweight or obese. Hello. 
but you may be at a normal weight. Behavioral and emotional signs and symptoms of binge eating disorder include eating unusually large amounts of food in a specific amount of time, such as over a two hour period, feeling that your eating behavior is out of control, eating even when you're full or not hungry, eating rapidly during binge episodes, eating until you're uncomfortably full, frequently eating alone or in secret, feeling depressed, disgusted, ashamed, guilty, or upset about your eating, frequently dieting, possibly without weight loss. Unlike a person with bulimia, after a binge, you don't regularly compensate for extra calories eaten by vomiting, using laxatives, or exercising excessively. You may try to diet or eat normal meals, but restricting your diet may simply lead to more binge eating. The severity of binge eating disorder is determined by how often the episodes of binging occur during a week. And there is no doubt in my mind that that has been the main source of my weight gain. Again, it's something that I remember struggling with for as long as I can remember. Even though my mom was super strict on me with food, I would sneak food and make it look like I didn't eat more. It's so fucked up, but a lot of my bitching happened in secret or at school because my mom wasn't there and she wasn't able to tell me what to not to eat. I have struggled with binge eating disorder for as long as I can remember. Even though my mom restricted my food a lot, at night when she was asleep I would go over to the fridge and eat leftovers but make the container look like nothing happened to it. Or I would buy snacks at school and hide it under my bed and eat those in secret. But the majority of my binge eating disorder was eating in secret and eating when I'm not hungry, eating until I'm uncomfortably full, eating as a source of comfort and to cope with whatever emotions I was dealing with. Because in my fucked up head, it like kind of gave me a sense of control even though my eating was out of control. My binge eating disorder got significantly worse once I got a car because I had more freedom and I was able to binge in my car and I was able to go to different places near the school during lunch and eat my little piggy heart out. I tried for so, so long to be the confident fat girl. And I really wish that people would stop thinking that fat is a dirty word, because it's not. But I just don't like how I look. I don't like how I feel. I feel like I don't belong in this body. This just isn't me. And when I see myself, I feel nothing but shame and disgust. I just really don't like what I see in the mirror when I look at myself. Aside from just the superficial things, I also don't feel healthy at all. I cannot do a lot of things that a normal person can do. And I had a couple moments where it really like hit me how far overweight I was. And I've had a couple of what I call like hit me moments when I've realized like just how overweight I was. Because my perception of my own body is all over the fucking place. I haven't been diagnosed with body dysmorphia, but I'm pretty sure I have it. One of the first hit me moments was at Universal Studios right when they reopened after COVID. They had a deal going on for Florida residents. So I went by myself and I was riding rides and I had to sit in the bigger person seat. And then on one of the rides that I tried to go on, it was one of the Harry Potter rides. I remember being taken out of line in front of the line of people that were there and being asked to try out their sample seat for the ride. And it wouldn't close. It was really embarrassing. So I couldn't ride that ride. They did give me fast passes and the girl was really sweet and she felt really bad about it. Then also, once I first started working in child welfare, I had to fly sometimes and I realized that I needed a seatbelt extender. And also, it was really uncomfortable unless I was in first class or some kind of like comfort wider seat because I'd be touching people and I'd have to ride like this. Like just try to confine myself as much as possible to make everybody else around me comfortable. Even putting shoes on is super uncomfortable for me. Like it hurts to like bend down and like tie my shoe or buckle a strap or like it's it's just a whole thing. I also hate seeing myself in photos. Being in photos, don't like it. Which I know if you have known me for a while or know me at all on any level, I love pictures. In my heart of hearts, I love pictures. I love taking pictures. I love being in pictures. I love making memories and being able to snap a picture and look back at that moment in a picture. It's something that I treasure and I hate that I don't feel confident enough to do it anymore. Like there have been a couple times where somebody has snapped a picture of me at like an event or something or my boyfriend and I will take a picture before we go on a date night and when I look at the picture I hate it. I freaking avoid photos like the plague now and it's just, just it's so unlike me. I, I, I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. just where I'm at right now. I cannot stand to see a picture of my body. Even 
pictures of my face, I have to take the picture because I know my angles and I don't want my double chin to show. I really hate that I've let this go so far and I wish that I had gotten this procedure done sooner. But shoulda, woulda, coulda is negative self-talk so we're not gonna do that anymore. This is where we're at now and I'm getting the damn surgery. <laughs> I put in my application a few months ago and I got approved pretty quickly. The next step after the application was to send a deposit, which I sent as soon as I got my next check. I think it was like $300. And that deposit is deducted from the surgery price. The total price for my surgery was, sorry, I have to look at it. It was $4,350. And that includes one travel companion stay, blood work, EKG, and physical, ground pickup and drop off, hotel room one night before surgery, hospital stay two nights, surgery, anesthesiologist, antibiotics, and pain medicine, hotel room for two nights after surgery, local sightseeing tour, call homes to the U.S., Wi-Fi, and aftercare support from a USA-based bariatric nurse. Of course, there are other costs that you need to consider, such as flights, passports. Also, there's a $93 CT scan that you have to get with Elias Ortiz and company. That's not included in the surgery price, in the package price. Also, if you have a hernia and they need to do a hernia repair, that's 350 extra dollars. And then there's extra charges if you need extra medicine or stuff like that. Also, you'll need things for your post-op care and you'll have to buy things for the pre-op diet and in preparation for surgery. So it's definitely not cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than in the US. And luckily for me, my man paid for the majority of my surgery, which I will be forever grateful and he was not paying for it because he doesn't like how I look or he wants me to be skinny or he just wants me to look a certain way. No. He constantly tells me how beautiful I am and he tells me how he wishes that I could see myself the way that he sees me and I'm trying not to cry but I just can't see myself the way that he sees me and he knows that this surgery would really help me in many ways including my confidence. First and foremost the surgery is going to help my health it will help with my confidence and it's like my tool to start fresh and defeat this eating disorder that I struggle with. I also believe that this is going to help me significantly with my back pain. Even though I've been struggling with chronic back pain since I was 13 and not extremely overweight, but the excess weight probably isn't helping. It's probably putting a lot of pressure on my back and hips, hence contributing to the pain that I feel on a daily basis, which prohibits me from doing a lot of normal everyday things. And that's another reason why I really haven't been able to lose weight because I can't really exercise without being in excruciating pain. Anyways, in this current moment, surgery is three days away, fly out in two days. Today is actually the last day that I can eat solid food. And I just remembered that I have to take a laxative tonight. Tomorrow, the very liquid diet begins. In case you don't know anything of what I just said or what I'm talking about, um, some bariatric surgeons will require that you do a pre-op diet in preparation for the surgery. I believe it depends on what your BMI is. Based on my BMI, I had to do the pre-op diet and I had to do it for two weeks. The amount of time that you do the pre-op diet also depends on your BMI. And even though surgery is like so close, I'm not nervous at all. Like, I'm just excited. I don't know if that's delusional of me. I don't know if it's unrealistic of me or whatever, but I just feel ultimately positive about it. I'm not nervous at all. I'm not somebody to get nervous about surgeries. I'm just really excited to get this new chapter of my life started. I have a lot of good support around me, including my amazing man, my parents, my doctor, my psychiatrist, friends, and I'm really grateful for the support system that I have going through this procedure. Also, I'm currently documenting my experience on the two-week pre-op diet, and I'll be posting that so y'all can see how that went. Spoiler alert, not well. Of course, I had to keep it up and maintain it because if not, then I can't have surgery, but it's it's hard. But just know before you watch any of my videos, and I'll probably preface, and just so you know, before you watch any of my videos relating to this procedure, everybody's experience is different. Everybody's body is different. My experience might not be your experience, and your experience might not be my experience, but I just wanted to share my journey and my experience. If you want to follow me on this journey, feel free to subscribe. I don't know if there's still a notification bell. If there is, click that. I also have a Instagram dedicated solely to the surgeries that I'll be having. Yes, I said surgeries. 
plural. I'm definitely planning on having plastics done once I'm done losing all the weight, so stick around for that as well. I should have never gotten lipo and boobs done in the first place without fixing the main problem, but again, no negative self-talk here, no woulda, shoulda, couldas. We're here now and this is what we're doing. If you want to follow my surgery Instagram, it is at sxdoll underscore Michelle. I'll have all my Instagrams listed below. I have my personal page, surgery page, makeup page, and my dog's page. I'm planning on posting a lot more videos related to surgery. I'm going to be vlogging while I'm there. Like I said, I already am vlogging the pre-op diet. I'm gonna vlog my recovery and I'll try to throw some beauty lifestyle things in there for y'all. Maybe some cooking stuff since my man's a chef. But let me know what you would like to see on my channel. I definitely need to get Alice back on here because I absolutely loved the video that we did together. It was so much fun and I still will watch it back and laugh my ass off. It just makes me so happy. Anyways, thank you for watching. Send me good vibes throughout this process and I'll see y'all around. Bye!